Is your Linksys router sending you to a COVID scan? So Manish, I hear people are still not changing default creds on their Soho routers and disabling the web interfaces and it's causing all kinds of DNS hijacking. Yeah, that's right. So uh, apparently uh, someone's uh, out there scanning for vulnerable lin Linux routers and I think it's specifically for Linux routers and they're, uh, they're kind of attacking, the attack involves, uh, you know, some brute forcing uh, weak or default credentials. And then once the you know once they have the credentials and they're in the box, they're uh, in the router. They're you know they uh, they they hijack the DNS by altering the DNS IP addresses in the in the router settings, right? And once they do that, it redirects the victims' machines to like a coronavirus theme page, and then it attempts to uh, you know then it, it downloads a malicious program program called ASCII, which is uh, you know it's a recently really it's a relatively new trojan. Um, you know, I think it typically it, one of the functions is it, it extracts the credentials from the browser, extracts the passwords from the crypto wallets and things like that. Um, but once you get redirected to this site, um, you know, the site claims to be a COVID information application. It wants you to download and it's, uh, yeah, from the World Health Organization. Of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, right? So now that everyone's working from home, you know, it's like, yeah, this is the type of thing that they're, you know, they're going after, I guess. Um, and, and probably because people now working from home, they want to have good connections. They probably went out and bought new routers and hoping that many of them are Linksys routers too, right? Um, but once the, so basically what happens when you click, um, you know, there's a download button on the site to download the application um and uh, it's pretty interesting the the href tag um they changed it to they set it to you know just like google.com google.com slash chrome so when you hover over the button that's what you see so it doesn't look like you're doing you know uh, you know you're downloading anything from a malicious site um and then uh you know it, it then um it downloads the uh, I guess the downloader portion of the malware uh, from I think four Bitbucket repositories, but even that they've uh, masked the URL by a tiny URL link. Um, you know, and, and even the, the file that gets downloaded, it has a legitimate sounding name. Uh, you know, so they've taken a, a great length in kind of um, you know. Uh, Making you know masking the things that people have been typically taught to look for to not do, you know, hover over the you know the link or the button to see what shows up, you know, things like that, um, you know, and it's pretty interesting. You know, it's a very good attack because it's relying on people that are not really um, into security and things like that uh, to fall for it. Um, ultimately. Uh, I, I, I think uh, Bitdefender did the, did the analysis on this, and they, uh, um, you know, they think they believe that it's de you know it's definitely from brute forcing the router, um, and it's either the router or the Linksys cloud account actually uh, is what they what they think. Um, you know, even the Linksys cloud account once you once you get access, then you can remotely manage the router anyway. So it's it's just like having access to the router itself. So, and they did provide a couple of D, the malicious DNS IPs that once you go, uh, oh, I'm sorry, one of the things that I forgot to mention is there's a lot of common sites like Disney.com that you would go to and that uh, once you try to go to that, the, the malicious DNS uh, redirects you to, uh, you know, the site where you would download this. So most people, you know, they're not familiar with DNS hijacking. So, you know, they would think that this is a legitimate thing you know, I'm either going to DNS, and I think there's some Amazon, there's some really common uh, URLs that uh, people would go to that would re would redirect you to the malicious, malicious page. And probably, you know, uh, some of these people think that this is legitimate, right? I'm going to Disney, they want me to get this information for some reason. Um, and uh, so far, uh, they seem to have a little over almost 1,200 victims. Um, uh, but that's through their visibility. So we don't really know the extent of this. And as more people, 
you know, as you know, this continues, people may decide to upgrade their routers because they're worried about their connection connectivity. You know, this may continue to, to get even worse, uh, you know, as people typically do that, you know, they forget to change passwords and things like that. So, you know, I think um, one of the important things that I take away from this story is, you know, a lot of people, I think they might think, well, I practice safe browsing habits and they couldn't get infected because they only go to, you know, really well-known trusted websites. And that may be true to some degree that that would insulate you from getting compromised. But this particular scenario, what they're doing is um, the attackers are compromising your home router, which is in between you and the internet. They get in there, they replace the DNS settings with um, the IP addresses of their bad website. So instead of going to the real Google or the real Amazon, even though you're typing that domain name in the way it really is, the router is giving the wrong answer to you and pointing you to a rogue website that might, you know, present some sort of other application or something to you um, and trick you into getting affected, even though it looks like it's the real website. So, um, yeah, I think that's the real important kind of uh, uh, aspect of this technique here, this DNS hijacking technique is that it really allows an attacker to get in between you, your computer, and the internet. And a lot of people might not, you know, think about it's that it's even possible that their home router could be lying to them about where website, you know, really exists. So, you know, I think the many common users, uh, home, especially home users with home routers and things like that, that they may purchase themselves. You know, they, I think that these types of things are, are not really apparent to them that they should be, uh, you know, kind of uh, ensuring that the security of the router is is very good. It's more like my my laptop, you know, I've updated everything on my laptop and things like that. That's kind of their focus, uh, not necessarily the router itself. Uh, I think we could push a little bit of the responsibility back on the manufacturer on this because, I mean, I've gotten, just like we all have, purchased many routers at home and every single time, just about, at least in the last couple of years, the, the web interface has always been enabled by default. Um, I've seen admin admin as username right. password. There was never any force from the actual interface for me to change that password. I knew right away, I don't need this. I don't need to access my router from the outside. You know, I, I have no reason for it. I disable cloud count as well. Um, but I feel like the uh, manufacturers can can do a little something like, okay, let's, uh, Let's inform the user that their access from the outside is going to be disabled by default. If you want to enable it, um, if you go here and we have to enforce a strict password policy, um, as strict as they can get it. Um, and this is never going to change unless they make a change in their manufacturing, right? In their software development, when they create right. that, that should be one of the first things. Um, they should also kind of enforce updates, right? Like they're not pushing updates to routers. It's not as easy as pushing updates to like a Windows box, right? But uh, I think I think the, the vendor has to also, um, and I've seen that because I purchased a DVR from my house and with knowing all the hacks that are out there and all the vulnerabilities, I don't expose mine to the internet. I go through VPN, but it would not let me configure or set up any aspect of my DVR without changing the actual password to log into the system to a very high strength password, which I thought was great. It annoyed me at first because I didn't want to set a password. I wanted to just get on with my configuring and do that after. But they were like, nope, has to be a high strength one. And then you can continue configuring the box and setting it up for your use. Uh, so I feel like until that happens, this is constantly going to be a problem. Um, and like John said, you know, you know, we're as, as good as you can be, as secure and as smart with your surfing as you can be when this type of thing happens. Yeah, you just don't know. Uh, it, yeah, you just you don't realize. Yeah, that's a good point, George. I think uh, pressuring these the manufacturers of these devices is, you know, something that to, you know, kind of force people to do, uh, you know, set up a, a strong password and not enable internet access by default. I think those are really good uh, suggestions for, um, you know, the manufacturers of these routers. And, uh, you know, I will maybe come to Cisco's defense a little bit in that, um, you know, I use Cisco devices a lot, the Linksys routers, and um, I think I had some pretty new ones 
um, as a matter of fact. And I believe that all the ones I've gotten lately, which has been within the past year or so, year or two, um, all come pretty secure where they okay. don't have um, management from the internet enabled by default. They also have a update feature in it to check for new firmware and let you know that it's there, uh, you know, that there's new firmware available. It doesn't automatically install it, I don't think. But, um, you know, some, some vendors are definitely doing better than others, I would say. And, um, you know, I don't know what models are impacted by the story that Manish has here. Clearly, there's some Linksys ones because that's what they're talking about. Um, and we know that some of the older models definitely had issues uh, around that, uh, like George was saying, you know, exposing them, their management or to the Internet by default, but um, I think a lot of vendors have been wising up to this over the years and getting better, especially American-based companies uh, seem to be pretty solidly kind of leading the charge and um, being more conscientious about having secure devices out of the box or as secure as they can make them without making it super inconvenient for their customers. Cool. That's good to hear. Yeah, I've, my last experience has been a couple of years ago and, and I had a few Asus routers at home, so I haven't had a Linksys or a Cisco base, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that. It's good to hear that uh, they're locking it down.